<laughs> Very corny. <laughs> All right, hello everyone. So last week I uploaded a top to bottom of my favorite hit run in Whistler. If you haven't seen it yet, you can find the link here, I think. Um, but this week we're gonna dive into the behind the scenes of what it took to get that shot. So let's do it. So I knew going into this, the filming was probably gonna be just as hard as the riding. So I enlisted Bailey for it. Um, her filming skills are newly acquired, but her riding skills are very solid. We set up to shoot this last Tuesday. There had been a nice reset to the snowpack up here, so everything was nice and soft. A little choppy in places, but overall I figured it was going to be the best day. So when we got to the hill that morning, I quickly realized that I'd forgotten the ND filters for the GoPro. I used them to set the exposure, and uh, I knew that if I was going to go out there and get this shot, I didn't want in the back of my mind that I could have had the ND filters on, it would have looked even better. So I made a couple phone calls. Luckily, Austin and Sean were headed out sledding and coming by the hill, so they dropped them off for me. So thanks, boys. So we got our hands in the filters, headed up the mountain, and we started off with a, uh, a little recce run, kind of showing Bailey where all the hits were, where I figured they would shoot best from, and kind of just rolling down and picking the line and seeing what would work best. After we got that in, we went back up to the top, decided we'll do uh, a full run, but treat it as kind of a, a warm-up run, not going to be the full pull. Didn't get very far, ran into a group of schoolgirls, but that's all right. They have just as much right to be there as we do. So now attempt three. Okay, yeah, we'll just have another, have fun with it, no pressure, and we'll, um, yeah, just see how it does. I had a couple sketchy moments on this one, but we went top to bottom on it, or just about because on the last hit, Bailey took a little Tommy. <laughs> uh. When I was enlisting her for this video, I was definitely a bit worried about breaking her off, but she did quite good and survived this one. This was also some serious stress testing for the rig because uh, I haven't had it in any fresh snow environments like it was out there. It was snow coming out of the sky and we whacked the thing into the ground a couple times. And it did pretty good, so I was, I was very impressed, honestly. And it was actually good that lap three didn't work out because it was kind of foggy out and the light wasn't as nice as these next couple laps. So after lap three, Bailey was all good, rig was all good. We figured we'd give it another shot. So lap four was going great. I was feeling hot, Bailey was in the right spot. And just as we crested over the roller, I noticed a group of skiers there. And I was kind of eyeing it up whether or not I thought I could make the hit and not run into him, but it didn't seem worth the send. So I pulled the shoot on that one. I think it was the right call. I think they would have been pretty pissed if I creamed them. Yeah, running into people is no fun for anyone. <laughs> so here it is, lap five, the full pull. Awesome. So now that we've gone through sort of the on snow filming aspect of it, I figured I'd bring you into Premiere and show you what the rock clip looked like all the way through to my finished product. Okay, 
welcome to Premiere Pro. Well, I just want to start this off by saying that I don't really know what I'm doing here. I'm pretty new to this, so don't take any of this as the right way to do it, just the way that I have done it all as I'm learning. A lot of this stuff I learned from the Gimbal God tutorial. Um, I purchased that this summer and he teaches a lot of stuff that I do here. So if you want to learn more about this, uh, go grab that. So I'm going to start off here with the raw GoPro clip as I put it into Premiere. Um, Bailey did a great job staying quite tight during this, which is good. It's a great starting point. Um, we shot this in 4K. So luckily there's quite a bit of room to crop in and move around and do what we need to do. A couple things I had to do here is what you can kind of tell is the orientation, like the horizon level is moving around a bit. Um, sections like right here, we got pretty spaced out to kind of get around that lady. That hit's pretty fun, it doesn't really show up, but you kind of jump over this hole outside of the run, kind of cut in the corner. Um, I'm going to speed it up here. So through this section we got pretty spread too and there was a couple changes in the horizon that I had to pull out eventually. Yeah, and then this, this ender section through here. Yeah, so that's the raw clip. So initially I just threw some lens distortion removal on at this uh, minus 20 level, something I got from the Gimbal Gog tutorial. The next thing I did is I just started going through and just keyframing the different points within the video where I wanted myself to be. So if I'm just gonna zoom in here, you can kind of see these are all my keyframes. So I've got position ones and scale ones. So as we start off here, you can watch these numbers on the left just kind of move about. So the section's static here. Then we start bringing some scale in. Position starts to change right there. As I come in, I just zoom out here. These are all the keyframes hitting. So now there's a bit of change in rotation, which I, you can see right here, moving in and out as I'm trying to keep everything in line. Another way to show this too, actually, I don't know if it'll play through, but if I were to pause the video here and zoom out to say 25%, click on this motion, that's what my actual frame looks like and that's how zoomed in I am. So if we keep this going here, pause it again, you can see <laughs> the frame like that. I was actually pushing it pretty close to the edge there. Keep it going, back to here. I was having to pull a lot of rotation out of this clip, as you can see, it's shifting all over the place. Especially right here. Actually, if I scrub through this, you'll be able to see the frame sort of moving. Me trying to keep things in line. It's kind of cool. So all these key frames on the side here, you can see, I would just kind of pick my way through. Sort of do one pass, roughly go back through, take a look, see where it needed to adjust, adjust some, add some, take some out, and just keep kind of working through it until I was happy with it. So one thing you'll notice here with these keyframes is uh, they um, have this kind of double-edged thing. That's to show that all of these keyframes are continuous Bezier. This is another thing I learned from the uh, Gimbal God tutorial. So if I were to just select some of these, click here and go for temporal interpolation, I've selected continuous bezier. When you initially make the keyframes, they're linear. Um, so that can make things seem a bit, I don't know, sharp and jolty. As things move on these linear points, when you do the continuous bezier, it just smooths everything out. You can kind of cause a couple issues if you've done a bunch of your keyframes, and then uh, when you select that continuous bezier, you might notice that there's points in the video now that are not framed the same way. So you kind of have to go through and make sure that everything's all tight. So I kind of tend to do a pass or two in linear and then I continue spezier it all and then I go back and realign everything and do a couple more passes through. But There's also the velocity of the keyframes. Um, luckily this one I didn't have to mess with very much 
but you can actually go into each specific keyframe, select it, and then change how each one is affected by the velocity in and out of how quickly things are moving. Luckily, pretty much everything was flowing the way I wanted it to and I didn't have to dive very deep. Um, but if you're ever having troubles uh, getting things to line up the way you want it to, you could always you can always go in and uh, sort of mess with mess with the velocity, make things a bit smoother. So if you want to learn more about this, I would say go buy that gimbal guard tutorial because I'm just learning how to do this and he's been doing it a while and it's got it pretty dialed and goes way deeper than I'm going right now. But after I did the keyframes, it was uh, pretty simple. I colored it. Um, <laughs> I just realized that the whole time I had the uh, lens distortion turned off for you guys. So here's a showing of what that looks like on versus off. This is with lens distortion at minus 20. So lens distortion, lens distortion minus 20. So there's your difference. I just kind of like it. It takes the sort of GoPro look away. And for a follow cam, it also kind of makes you seem a little bit, a little bit closer. So once I'd done all the keyframes, I decided to go in and do the color. I'm also pretty beginning with the color, so don't take this as the right way to do it. Just This is just how I did it. But here is it without the color. Here's with the color on. Pretty light effect, really. Pretty much just trying to just make the whites look white, essentially. You can see in the scopes here, this is the Luma, and then this is like a histogram. I'm just doing this guy in there. So pretty much just bumping the whites, adding some saturation. Um, you can actually look, here's all the settings that I used. Um, a couple curves, keep things nice, and uh, color wheels. I don't know, if you want more in-depth stuff of what I do, I can definitely make that, but this one I just thought I'd bring it through briefly, and uh, if you have any more questions, just hit me up, or maybe I'll do a more in-depth video. But I'm still pretty new to all this, so I don't feel like I should do a how-to. This is more just a behind the scenes of what it took for me to make this video. And yeah, a little story behind the song. Um, this song is called Echoes by Pink Floyd. The complete song is 20 minutes long, and if you haven't listened to it and have 20 minutes, <laughs> I do recommend listening to it. It's pretty cool. It, in my opinion, it almost plays out like a movie. It's got some really good rising action at the start and then kind of fades down all the way to a point that you almost don't want to listen to the song anymore because it's so eerie and weird. And then it starts to build back up again and kind of just reminds me of how people lay out movies of sort of the things going good initially and then everything falls apart for the character and then you know it all comes back to triumph at the end and uh, this segment I cut out it's about 17 minutes in and that's sort of that building of the triumph and I've actually snowboarded to just this sort of minute and a half part a lot um, I remember in Perisher I was trying to switch back nines in the small park and I just remember always just skipping to this part of the song at the drop-in and sort of listening to the build to kind of get myself in the zone and stoke me out kind of drop into flow as best I could and yeah for some reason this song really does it for me so it was cool to use this little short building section of it for this video yeah and then there's just a couple titles here at the end my little thing like subscribe whatever if you want to and uh, yeah that's pretty much it so this clip probably took two hours of shooting five laps and then maybe eight to ten hours in the ending bay <laughs> I'm not super efficient, so actual results may vary. Someone else might be able to do this way faster, but that's what it took me. And yeah, thanks for watching. I think next week, hopefully, I'll toss you a bit more action-packed uh, video. But if you like ones like this, let me know. Definitely down to do more of this kind of stuff if you like it. Okay, I'll see you next week. Another video, Thursday. See you. See you. See you. See you.